Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Now please hit the like button and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. And I appreciate my su subscribers I already have. And let's move this over here now. And this is um, the Supreme Court case could change elections. Thank goodness for the latest Supreme Court case is not based on abortion rights, which had leftists spiring out of control this past summer. Next on the court docket is redistrict, redistricting, redistricting. Moore v. Harper was granted last June for the October 2022-23 term and oral arguments are scheduled for December 7th. The Supreme Court must consider whether it was constitutional for the North Carolina to dismiss the last redistricting map in favor of the Republicans. Districting. Most states cannot use independent state legislature doctrine to interfere in redistricting, but North Carolina passed a law granting local courts authority to review the maps. The case is not cut and dried. If successful, critics say that independent state legislature, legislature doctrine could create a path for a single, single party rule. The U.S. Constitution states that times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. This clause in Section 1, Article 4, indicates legislative power to draw on congregational, congressional districts, set rules for federal elections, and appoint presidential electors. The state courts would not be able to interfere even if their state constitution is violated. North Carolina passed a law 20 years ago that empowered state courts to review electoral maps and create their own interim districting plans. Moore's lawyers must prove the legislature violated the U.S. Constitution by imposing its authority over redistricting. Another getting another district. Many people involved in the case fear a broad ruling. Redistricting. Redistricting. Redistricting? Oh, I'm close. Whatever. Should the Supreme Court rule in favor of North Carolina, legislatures will have more power to decide rules for federal elections, laws about voter ID requirements, early voting procedures, redistric redistricting beyond the governor's vetoes, vetoes, vetoes. Hello, Betty. And state courts. It's a, it's a 1.28 a.m. my time. I won't be on much longer. I think I'm getting tired. A North Carolina League of Converse, Conservation Voters, Democratic voters, backed by the National Redistricting Foundation, sued in state court Ooh, over redistricting plans drawn by the Republican legislature. The Democratic majority ruled that the plans were unconstitutional, partisan gerrymanders. It's possible that the court could issue a narrow ruling. Congregational, congressional research service analysts said in order that limits state court review of redistricting to certain circumstances could be a more favorable outcome. Mm, might be. It could be. Okay, now that was kind of a shorty. So let's see what else I've got lined up here. Uh, I've got to move my camera over a little bit. Um, oh, don't do that. Oh, this computer, I, I don't know what to do about it. Um, let me see what this one is here. 
Okay, let's put that one down. We'll go on to the next one here. <clears throat> Three strikes and you're out. Sounds like a ball game to me. Mike Lindell, Blast RNC Chair's Leadership. GOP leadership is a complete and total failure. Needs a massive overhaul. My Pillow founder, Mike Lindell, told Newsmax as he announced his plan to run for chairman of the Republican National Committee. It's a big problem. It's one of the most important organizations in our country, and it's 2018, fail. 2020, fail. 2022, fail. Lindell said on a Monday episode of Eric Boiling the Balance, or Eric Bowling the Balance, B-O-L-L-I-N-G, Eric Bowling the Balance, that's three F's in a row. And when you're CEO or head of any company, you're out. You don't get three chances like that. Rona McDaniel has failed. That's R-O-N-N-A. Rona, Aruna, Rona McDaniel has failed. She has done nothing but fail. Lindale charged that many are furious with the leadership of the RNC chair, Rona, Rona McDaniel. I found out this from her own people in Michigan. They're disgusted with her, and there's big holes in the boat, he said. Let me tell you something. If you have a business and your footprint changes, it can't be the same input or you're going to get the same output. That's good common sense there. You have to change the input. You've got to change the status quo to get something different. And these donors, Eric, are going to ask, hey, why should we put another dime in the RNC? Another online appearance by Lindell showed the MyPillow founder similarly lambasting McDaniel, arguing this should have been the biggest red wave in the history of the world. Why didn't it happen? The donors want to know. The RNC completely lied to the American people and their donors. He alleged that McDaniel had done a lot of non-things, such as raising a bunch of money for election integrity while never spending a dime toward it. She lied to the American people, Lindell charged. She lied to us all. Lindell reportedly said he was encouraged to oust McDaniel because many believe the GOP needs a leader. I've proven what I can do. I've got businesses. 2,000 employees, said Lindell. When I came up against adversity and my footprint of this country chart changes, like just for an example, just Walmart dropping me in May. I had to make a decision, you know, to not lay off employees. They have families and such. Instead, I quick opened up my mystore.com, moved them over there into shipping, I changed what I'm going to do as a business based on my footprint. Common sense. My pillow CEO promised the GOP would face massive changes should he be elected RNC chair. I'm not going to take years either, he said. It's going to be very fast. And I've been down this road before where I've faced adversity where you have to change your input to get a different output. We need to start winning, Eric. This party has to start winning. He's right. I didn't order any of his company's pillows. Uh, I can't afford his price, but I'm sure they're good pillows. He sounds like a real good businessman also. Well, that was a shorty. Boy, I'm going on shorties here, aren't I? <laughs> a lot of shorties. Uh, let's see. Let's try this one. Uh, this one was kind of interesting because I didn't hear or read 
too much about the replacement for Biden. Uh, some of you probably know more than I do about this situation. Probably a lot of you know about any of my things that I put up and read to you. And we go down. Come on, give me the page. Hurry up. It's trying to load. Sometimes this computer will work with me and then sometimes it won't. I call I called Finger Hut. Oh yes I did. <coughs> and they told me. They said, Well, you didn't buy the year long what do you call that? Protective to protect your machine and if something goes wrong with it, what you gotta do is pack it back up in a box. You have to go find a box, get the packing, pack it up, and send it back to them. They'll fix it, and then they'll send it back to you. Well, this was supposed to have been a brand new computer. I've had a lot of computers. And this runs just like a reformatted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was used. Yeah. Had a lot of trouble with it. Biden replacement confirmed. Now, I didn't hear anything about this. This was November 21st, 2022. Insider says this is who takes over. Joe Biden maintains he is running for re-election. Gretchen Willimer, or Whitmer is the pick to take his place. But Biden's party continues to act like that is not the case. They've got pictures here, and they're not showing them. So I have to go until I find a line to read. And a top Democrat insider reveals this is who will take over for Biden. The results of the midterm elections did not set up the 2024 playing field in the Republican Party. It also left Democrats talking about what is next. And on the side of the aisle, the supposed shiny new toy is Michigan's fanatically pro-lockdown governor, Gretchen Whitmer, who won re-election by 12 points. Top party strategist James Carville uh, talked up Whitmer's chances as of a 24 contender in an interview with MSNBC's race baiting host Joy Reid. I feel the media has overplayed the importance of Republican Governor Ron DeSantis and underplayed the victory of Whitmer, Reid claimed. Whitmer, to me, was the biggest single individual winner on Election Day because she survived real threats to democracy in her state, got re-elected by a healthy margin, and took over the state, Reid continued. Carville, who was the brains behind former President Bill Clinton's 1992 campaign answered that Whitmer would be a formidable form, formidable uh, 24 or 28 candidate. First of all, for 2024, 2028, she's already in the talk of being a very serious presidential candidate if she runs. Carville replied, I think people really understand what she's done and how tough she is. I think Gretchen Whitmer is at the top of any conversation about any national figure of the Democrat Party, he declared. That is just a fact. What stuck out about Carvel's response was twofold. First, Carvel entertained the idea of Gretchen Whitmer running for president in 2024, and President Biden's public post posture is that he is running for re-election. Members of the political party do not float the idea of other candidates when a sitting president makes his intentions clear. Obviously, Carville does not believe Joe Biden is running again in 2024, or LT wouldn't have so cavalierly thrown out Whitmer's name as a top prospect for the next presidential election. 
Second, Carvel completely glossed over Vice President Kamala Harris. Now I can see why. If President Biden chooses not to run for re-election, the sitting Vice President should own a ham hammerlock on the nomination. But Kamala Harris is so unpopular, her approval rating is just 38%. That's no Democrat considers her a serious White House contender. Top Democrats like James Carvel know that Joe Biden is too old and senile and Kamala Harris is too toxic for either to be the party's standard bearer in 2024. That's why top Democrat strategists continue to openly discuss moving past them in 2024. Stay tuned to the Conservative Underground News for any updates to this ongoing story. And I will. Okay, um, I'm going to be on my way. I'm not sure if I'll come back tonight. And I've got a whole desktop here that I can work on tomorrow. But I might find something and I might pop on later. I don't know. But I want to wish everybody, wherever they are, if they're in the daylight now, have a great day. If you're in the nighttime hours like we are here in Iowa, um, I hope you have a silent, sleepful night, comfortably and warm. We have 29 degrees here right now. It's a little chilly out there. And just remember, give someone a blessing because you are a blessing. Laters. <laughs>